Welcome to the Broski Dills podcast, the best podcast in all of the land. It's your boy Kiko Flo, Kiko Cervantes. You can just call me Kiko or the immigrant. I don't feel offended by that. I am an immigrant. I'm a nomad. Actually, that sounds better. It's funny because if you're if you're wider than me, then you call yourself expat, which I don't get it. It's very weird. Immigrant expat. Mm, I'm an expat then. <laughs> why? Why? Because you're wider. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're from the same place. But no, but, but you eat beans and you have an accent, so you're an immigrant. <laughs> Anyways, God damn it. Chef Maurice on the other side of the world, San Francisco, rocking the Cincinnati Reds. I, I actually my like favorite. that little my Trump. favorite. That's your favorite hat or the favorite team? No, favorite hat. I love that hat as well. Thank you. I mean, because I kind of, you. you know, I've seen all your hats in rotation at this point. I, and I have a new favorite. Um... The one that I just got recently from from when I made a trip Alabama? to Alabama. Alabama. Okay. The the Montgomery Biscuits. I love the name. We we actually went to the stadium. We didn't That's even watch a the game. But That's a baseball team. A baseball team in, mm. in the minor leagues. Oh, okay. So uh, it's like a double A team, and uh, they're affiliated to Tampa Bay. <laughs> so okay. like Tampa Bay is their owners, and then the players who who play there. They eventually come up to be. Oh, I didn't know that that you could have like your, you know, minor league team being a whole different state. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a thing. Um, we actually have a well, we have the major league team, the Giants here, and then we have the minor league uh, in San Jose. So, oh, which, in California, which is very, which is very close, like 30, 30 40 minutes away. Okay. Alabama does Alabama have a major professional baseball team? They don't have any major teams. Okay. They don't have <laughs> only, teams. <laughs> <laughs> only the rodeos. I don't the know. rodeos. Okay. I, I wanted to do. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. San Francisco, Madrid is a connection that we do through the internet. Internet was created in 1975 by a guy named Steve Jobs. And thanks to him and then Elon Musk, his uh, son, I believe, we're able to now have this thing going on. So direct connection. It is true. Chef Maurice is about nine hours behind, so I am traveling in the future, which is not yeah. something that I thought yeah. I would be able to do in my life. <laughs> now, <clears throat> there's this practice that you brought up to the table. I mean, not for not me. because I've been part of it. Right, but you said like, oh, it would be a cool <laughs> topic, right? And I believe this is a new trend. Maybe you've seen it in TikTok. So tell, tell us what's the trend and, and where did you see this? Where, where did you learn from it? I... Let, let me go into that first. I, I just read about it uh, being a new trend into uh, straight men. So the, the, the trend is bud sex, B-U-D sex. So like buddies, mm -hmm. it's a trend where two straight men uh, penetrate each other. Damn. And they're actually not gay and they don't consider themselves gays. Okay, so they're just butt sex partners. Right, they're just bud playing sex. with you. Because, you know, it, we, we got to be clear because because of our accents, it might be mi misconstrued, <laughs> right? It might be misunderstood, misinterpreted. Bud sex. Um, I would even think this might be like sex that involved like buds of weed but no it's buddies right <laughs> buddies and the first thing that I'm, i mean first time i hear this trend but the first thing i want to say before I, I even go into it and analyze it right is it seems that it's a trend coming from love right from like real friendship which is which is something that i do support you know lord knows you know what you and me would be doing if if geographical limitations weren't a thing right so it might <laughs> it, it's possible that it's actually beneficial to both of our marriages that, you know, we're so many miles away, right? <laughs> uh, so butt sex <clears throat> is just sex between buddies, Yeah, but, but we're not gay. Right, right. So basically, if you and I were to have some fun time, okay, because we're buddies. Right. We're not gay. We're the best of buddies. <laughs> right. And we're some not gay. Some will say, right, we're not gay, <laughs> definitely not gay. And... Uh, you know, we like to penetrate things. I mean, now this is the thing. You you again have gone to this word penetration, which is not. I don't really. I don't know if it's the best one to use in, in YouTube, but um, I don't think they. We don't know. want them to demonetize this video. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, it's not even monetized yet. So imagine <laughs> demonetizing it before it gets monetized. But I mean, can this work? Uh, you know, without the penetration, like, can we just do a little kissy kissy, little touchy touchy, or do we have to get into the aggressive Mad Max stuff? I think, I think uh, something has to go in your body. Right. Okay. You know, you know, you, you know what's funny? I, I find it that even when being a little gay, right? Men always have these manly things about it. It's like, no, 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 wait. If we're going to do this, we're going to do this the right way. <laughs> no bitching around, okay? I don't want no pussies in here just kissing and touching. We're penetrating, goddammit. <laughs> so I love it. I love the commitment. Um, but sex. Between buddies, and I mean, is this something that maybe like wives are allowing their, their, you know, their husbands to do? Like, let's say you have Tommy and Jimmy. They live in the same suburb. They've mm. been playing, um, you know, uh, back among for years and making barbecues with Stephanie and Kathy, right? They're neighbors. You know, they tried swinging already. They tried the orgies. Now they're at a point where like, hey, well, you know, what can we do to take, you know, the edge off, you know, from working in the bank or, you know, accounting, <laughs> right? Typical suburban family. So they're like, look, what if Jeff and Tommy are allowed to once a week, you know, fuck, fuck their brains out? No so, homo, <laughs> no homo, right? Zero. Totally no homo, like more, more like a workout. Like, like when you have two guys doing jujitsu in the ground, are we judging <laughs> them in that way? No, that's the, right? best, that's the best part about the Olympics, and that's coming up. I get to see all this, all these matches. That's and... the best way to get to get beat up by a jiu-jitsu guy in the streets. I, I, what did you say I, about jiu-jitsu? <laughs> I feel like this is this is a thing that has been going on for ages. The butt, the sex? butt, the butt sex. I think I feel like it's something, and I feel like it's very useful. This term is very useful in uh, the Latin American countries. Why so? Because I've, I have met a, a lot of uh, Latin American guys where they have told me that they've had uh, sexual intercourse with, uh, with another man and he's not gay. He oh, had for never, real? I have. And, and like a serious, serious comment. <laughs> I have met this. This well, you said you met you met multiple people that have multiple told you this? people that have told me this. Wait, I've I mean, never have, seen this trend. We have gotten to a comfortable level where where they would be able to tell me this, of course. Um, and yeah, they they've told me this, and I guess being a, a, an ignorant as as I am, I'll be like, okay, you are gay. You just don't want to call yourself gay. That, that's fine, um, but. Now that I connect two and two together, this, this, the main one that I think about right now happened years ago before this was a thing. And, okay. and uh, so he was a visionary, pioneer, a visionary, pioneer, if you will, if you will. Okay. I think, and the funny thing is that I think he follows us on TikTok on one of the accounts. So okay. it's. So he was my buddy, like very good friend, until I I found out a lot of things about him that made me kind of stare away from him. But this was not one. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm, I'm putting myself into a hole right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> no puns <laughs> intended. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I got it. Okay. 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 Um, okay. So 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 it exists. Now this is the thing. The way that I look at it is, butt sex. Shit, I call, I call it butt fuck. I, I just think it's more... <laughs> it's actually a comedian. <laughs> uh, Rory, Rory Scovel. He has a, a, a special on Netflix that's really good where he starts talking about uh, who here likes anal? Who likes anal? And then he's like, how about, how about a butt bug? He's like, I just, I, I just feel it sounds, sounds more wholesome. Who here mm. butt who here butt bugs? I like butt bug. <laughs> so butt fuck, butt sex. I think that that's respectable. You know, you have a homie back in the day, he broke his arm. He really can't jerk it with the left because it's like, you know, it's kind of retarded hand. And you do it with your homie's hand. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's I would say not butt sex, but that's butt love. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not a thing that I'm into, right? But I respect it. Now, 
you go to the next level. Hey, I'm with my friend. We penetrate each other. Hey, that's that's butt sex. Mm. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Now, I find it a little bit uh, hypocritical that you're trying to take advantage and enjoy this magical moment with your homie, but then you want to not address it as what it is, which is a homoerotic experience <laughs> that should be respected and and uh, em embraced, right? Mm. If you're into that. So I don't understand this negating of like, oh, this is not gay. Okay, then what is it? Are you guys doing it for experimental reasons? Because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, if you're doing it for attract attraction reasons, right? Uh, pleasurable reasons, then how is that not... I mean, isn't that what gay is when you're attracted to the same sex, right? And you and you want to do sexual things. I mean, I, yeah. So, I, so my final thing on this. Butt sex, perfectly fine. Is it gay? Of course it is. That's what makes it... That's what makes it hot and what it is. I, I found a... I found an article about... Uh, this study basically and how it hits the the rural community so the people who lives in the rural uh, areas mm -hmm. of the country uh this is more prone to happen uh you know buddy sex maybe there's not enough women in the town or mm. you know uh, and also one of this the is comments... actually more prominent in the rural communities yeah uh, and to, be, to be honest this is getting me a little bit horny now <laughs> Maybe in the rural areas of, of Spain, they do the same shit. Yeah. Yeah. But you just have to it, become friends. The thing is, in, Vene in Venezuela, I don't even think this is that... Like, I think maybe people should know about it, because then, then in the rural areas, it wouldn't be fucking donkeys mm. and goats. Mm -hmm. Do you think in, I, in, in, in Latin American, American countries, because they have this taboo with gay... They're like, I know, I'd rather you fuck a goat than fuck another guy type thing. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. parents that think like that. They're like, no, you you fuck a cow before you fuck Timmy from next door. <laughs> so, uh, but, any, but anyways, yeah, so, so rural areas, I wouldn't have thought that. And, I would think and, rural, in rural areas, they probably just, you know, go with their sister. So, but anyways, this is very innovative. Okay. Uh, this is the 21st century for them. Okay. Um, one of the comments that that I, you know, looked or gazed through this through this uh, article is that one of the dudes says it's not gay if it's not. I mean, it's not gay if your eyes are closed or the lights are off or your best friends. It's not gay. Okay, but these are people trolling, right? Of course. Uh, nah, no, this is actually a person who said this. And like, uh, what is this in Reddit? No, this is uh, a website cut, uh, called The Cut. Mm. The Cut. And, you know, you just search sexuality, the phenomenon of butt sex is tr between straight, uh, straight men. Okay, that's, a, that's, that's mad weird. It's like, I'm gay, but I identify as straight. <laughs> well, it, I, I love the comment uh, from this person because it sounds like a joke. <laughs> Sounds like a 13 year old uh, Kiko would say this. It's not gay if your eyes are closed or the lights are off mm. or you guys are best friends. It, it's not gay. It's just nah. not gay. But I don't know if you've heard about uh, soaking in, in Utah. I've heard about it. Can you explain so, to the public? Uh, what I recall is that soaking is when uh, a man penetrates a woman but doesn't thrust the hip. It just stays, the, the, the penis stays inside the vagina, just hard and soak in the moment. Well, and you know, you, you know, what's the next step to soaking? And this is, is for, and this is for real. <laughs> There's a body and I'm not even kidding. People might be like, oh, Kiko, always with your jokes. This is 100% real. You do the soaking part, but then there's a friend underneath the bed who's going to shake it aggressively. This way, you're going to be penetrating in and out but not because of you okay right the it's lord a... the lord knows i can't stop this <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean 
Of course. Uh, shit. Uh, is that is that real? That's a hundred percent. That's a hundred percent real. I know so it might you, sound you, crazy, but if you if you're talking about the Utah Mormons, mm -hmm. there's nothing Those crazy. Are crazy. Yeah, there's nothing crazy <laughs> to them. They're nice. Hey, by the way, super nice people. I hear they're super friendly, but but they they, they will fuck in a bed with a guy in the bottom <laughs> shaking them. Yeah, the, the soaking part, I think it's it's interesting because I think it falls into the same category as in the butt sex. It's a, you guys are fucking, you're just not calling it fuck. Because okay, God oh, this is, is perfect. You. This is perfect. It's a perfect analogy because it's two scenarios where they're definitely doing the thing they're trying to claim right. they're not doing. And they're, and they're trying to call it off on technicalities. Right, right. Like, for example, a pedophile is with a child and he's like you know in tanzania 13 is legal age mm. it's like mm. yeah that's uh that's mm. a technicality there that doesn't really <laughs> matter you know so uh, same with uh the mormon uh couples they have anal sex instead of vaginal sex because anal sex is not sex you know what's crazy about that because i also heard that about a like, christian and catholic like oh i'm like how isn't that not worst? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like if I'm God, if I'm God, I, I would be like, damn, if you would have fucked normal before marriage, okay, I would have like asked you to do a couple of praise and shit, but I led you in into heaven. But instead you let them penetrate your asshole. Yeah, I don't want you, you're going to hell straight to hell. Like, I don't understand how that logic makes sense. It's, it's uh, interesting people who come up with this. By the way, I'm sure. not judging any type of sex. What I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is, I don't understand the logic, you know, like how that will cancel out in God's eyes. He's like, oh, damn it. You figured out the loophole. I uh, should have fucking, you know, wrote the rules better. They know they can get fucked in the ass and that doesn't count. God damn it. I've messed up on that one. Uh, the same person who gave the last comment. Mm-hmm. You know, about the lights being off and mm -hmm. fucking your best friend. Anyway, uh, the same person says, I am not concerned with whether the men I describe in this book are really straight or gay. So. In this uh, book. But, uh, yeah, I, I, apparently this person has a book coming out. I don't know. Mm. I don't want to. I didn't read the whole thing. I just yeah. read comments. Okay. okay. Um, but I, I, I feel like. You know, buddy, I think you should embrace what you are. That's why. Yeah, bro. You're not binary, doggy. You know, keep it real. <laughs> like, you're part of the community, homie. That's that's cool. That comes with perks these days. You know what I mean? Embrace it. Go out there. It's like, hey, I'm a, I'm a they. You know, whatever. But now, now thinking something different, it's like, what does, and I think you touched on it a little bit before. I, I what touched does a little. The, what does the partner, the, let's say the girlfriend says about, or the wife says about this. This it made me think because, uh, sh what if the other person, uh, your your husband is the other buddy. Your husband is fucking has some disease, and then it, it, it can bring up a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how do you bring it up to the table to talk to your wife about this? Hey, babe, you know you know Johnny. I think this is this is this is funny. It's like one of those. Uh, disengagement of reality, you know, like uh, when you watch a movie, right? Like Mad Max, I recommend it. You should watch it. Um, you suspend belief. And with movies, you often do this. You need to suspend belief so that you can get into this world and sort of ride the wave of the story, right? You cannot be the whole movie like, okay, yeah, that's not even real. Like, that's a space, really? They're just going to go on a spaceship to space and that's going to work like that? Like, the oxygen is not going to be... No, you, should, you have to suspend belief sometime, right? Okay. Now, can you suspend belief to the point where you're literally not believing that you're doing the thing, you know, you're doing like, you know, you're with your friend, you're doing the butt sex. That's fine, but that's, that's what it is, you know, or like people, they say that when you're in jail for a long time, prison, you can, you know, fuck your bodies there. And then when you get out, it's like, oh. Like that was just in there, you know, that was prison gay. Now in the outside world, I'm totally straight. 
It feels like one of those, what happens in Vegas. Right. In Vegas. Also, there's people that think, well, if I'm the one putting it in, in a hole, then I'm not gay. I'm just using a hole. And I think those are all strawmen arguments like, <laughs> bro, are, what the fuck are we talking about? That's all gay. <laughs> and I'm fine with it. Shit, I love the community. I wish I had, you know what? Right now in my life, you know what I need? A community? I need, I need a gay friend. <laughs> maybe, okay. You think maybe in a few months I'm like, ah, oh, goddamn it, I fell it. I fell in it. <laughs> I'm, I'm butt sexing with fucking Jimmy. God damn it. No, but what I'm saying is, uh, you know, a gay friend is a different perspective. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm cool with it. I love him. I'm just saying I'm not into it. That's fine. If you are into it, embrace it. Don't deny it. This is the same, this is the same mis uh, disservice that people that, you know, 30 years ago, they knew they were gay, but they couldn't get out of the closet because of the taboos in the, in the world. That's sad. Thankfully, we're in a world now where the community embraces that. No, you're, that's cool. Come out, shit. Come out of the closet. Come into Narnia, baby. We're doing wild things out there. This grinder. Well, maybe, maybe for gay guys, this is a, this is a way of not telling your family that you're gay. Well, right? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right now, as soon as the real, okay, as soon as the, self-identified gay guys find out about this butt sex trend they're like oh yeah we're gonna clean up we're gonna clean house here we're gonna <laughs> fuck all of these guys yeah yeah you think to yourself you are or you're not i'm still fucking the shit out of you and you're gonna walk funny tomorrow so i think that's <laughs> that's the reality right there i can i can see this uh being i can see this being a thing do, do you do you remember your in your high school days when you were in the locker room there was this guy who had girlfriends but he he was always looking at your at your dick i don't know mm, damn like, no in the, in, no in the, like you're in the locker room and you see this dude just looking at you naked it's like what the fuck dude i didn't but he's I, like i don't remember those situations <laughs> but i'm sure that it could have happened you know um but I mean, I didn't have, yeah, no, I, I never really had situations like that. The people that I, that ended up being gay from like middle school. We all knew from the yeah, beginning. Yeah, we all knew from the beginning, you know, because he would be sucking our dicks after school. It, <laughs> We're like, this is weird, right? This guy every, every day is a dick. This is not gay, right, guys? This is not gay. Nope, nope. We would, ask, uh, we, we would ask him, is this gay for us? And he's like, no, it's not gay for you guys nah. at all. As long as you allow me to suck your dick every day, you guys aren't even gay. <laughs> and we believe them, you know, so. So that's not, but we knew, right? I mean, the people that I knew, okay, put it this way. The people that I had doubts about when we grew up were like, oh, yeah, they were gay. Okay. And when they, even when they came out, it's like, dude, we already knew. Yeah, bro. You don't have to, you bro, don't have to say shit. <laughs> bro, every, everybody in the neighborhood knows. <laughs> your mom knows bro everybody knows and i'm actually kind of pissed off that i didn't you know life just pulls you in different places but i wish i had a close friend from back in the day that was gay the other reason i, I the other day I, I watched a movie on prime called ricky staniki with um Zac Efron, john, cena? john cena really good did you watch it i did not but you told me about this watch and it. I it's, it's, it it's really funny and what the fuck? Oh, in that movie, you know, it's like a typical, oh, we're four, you know, three or four friends from the childhood and we grew up together and then we have every year a plan that we do together, you know, very coming of age, whatever the fuck. And one of the friends is a gay guy. And he's also a black guy. That's a two for one right there. If I had a gay black friend, like that would be amazing. That would like, so many perspectives, right? But that, I, mm. I feel like that doesn't happen in real life, or maybe it, doesn't happen, it didn't happen to me. It is true. I'm kind of a bit of a, uh, what was it, in a not the friendliest of persons. So I'm not, I don't have that many friends, right? But I kind of wish I had a longtime friend from the childhood that was gay, that I could, you know, relate to. I don't know why. I just feel like that would, you know. But anyways, um, I wanted to let people know... <laughs> 
If you haven't been noticing, we are making uh, the episodes a bit longer. So they're close to an hour in the recent times. And we're going to pretty much try to try to keep it there. For a while, we were doing half an hour, 40 minutes once. And I thought that, that was good because, you know, it, it didn't make people commit too much. But I did see a comment from, a, you know, a listener from, from a long time. And people have told me, like, oh, I like the one-hour episodes, you know. You had the thirty-minute ones, and that's great. But then I'm like, "Fuck! I needed a little I more. Want more. And I, I just needed a little more. Not that much more. You know, <laughs> when you're like really nice, and you're like, "Fuck! I could have had one more beer." Mm. And and you weren't gonna be drunk. I'm not talking about when you're wasted and you're like, "Ah, oh, let me get another shot." Blah. No, I'm talking about like, "Damn! I'm I had two beers. I'm perfectly fine. If I would have had one more, I would have had some nice jokes." So I feel like that's how people <laughs> are feeling. And then I myself, the, the shows that I listen to and that I, I'm like, an hour is perfect because if it's less than that, sometimes I'm like, come on, doggy, give me a little bit more. Mm. I, know, I, I know that the casuals, they're going to be looking for the clips, maybe watch 10 minutes but for the, for the real ones from the day oneers. They're like, I need an hour, doggy. So you know what? We're giving you an hour every week. Damn. Check Maurice is like them, so then how, how long that's left now? <laughs> we have make, make, make the math, motherfuckers. <laughs> wow, one that means hour. that if the episode would have ended now in the past, it's just getting started, motherfuckers. We're halfway <laughs> there, guys. I, I want to see somebody leave a comment saying the episode starts and then put like 37 minutes and 40 seconds. No, no, but why? It's the same episode. I'm saying it's longer. Right, right. right. But we've talked so much shit that maybe you can start. I don't know. No, this is not talking shit. This is part of the, the topics. <laughs> but now I do want to go to the next topic. It is but true. Do you want, wait, wait, wait. Do you want to be part of butt sex? I don't want to be part of butt sex. Okay. And I think they need to get out of the closet. Okay. So embrace it and be yourself. Hashtag don't be gay. Say you're gay. <laughs> okay. I like that one. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be gay. Say you're gay. Right. Okay. Okay. I like so that one. Hashtag. I have another hashtag. <laughs> hashtag <laughs> food love. I have, I always send you these little clips and quotes that I find from Anthony Bourdain. Because, you know, as people that listen to the podcast for a long time, Anthony Bourdain is, you know, he, he looks after us, uh, after the podcast, and he wants us to succeed. And we keep its name up high. We have a rhyme uh, in the back of... Uh, uh, Chef Maurice, you know, a, is, that, is that the right word? A rhyme? A shrine. A shrine. A shrine. Uh, but you can see it now for uh, Anthony Bourdainis. Anyways, one of the recent things that I heard from him, and I wanted to get your instant reaction on this. It said, you know, when you travel, right? Let's say you travel to Hawaii or whatever the fuck, or Guatemala, right? And you go to a nice hotel there. He says, don't drink at your hotel. Find out where the people who work at your hotel do their drinking. Don't be afraid. Be smart, but be open to the world. And this is very Anthony Bourdain-y, right? He always has like this very uh, adventurous quotes. He's like, ah, you know, have the expired hot dog, you know, drink that beer in that shady bar that looks very dangerous, you know, live a little. What do you think about this latest one? Don't drink at the hotel. Drink where the people that work at the hotel drink. I, I feel like that's a good quote. That's what I do. Uh, when, I, when I moved here to San Francisco, I started going to bars that were, you know, more locally instead of... And I think it gives you a good sense of what's going on in the city, what kind of people there are. I'm, I'm with this one. I, I like the quote. Now, I like the quote because it is true... One thing that I've recently figured out, like I have a cousin that's doing like a European trip, you know, and he's telling me about certain things that he didn't like in some places, the crowds, the the sort of bad customer service, this and that. I'm not going to really mention any countries, you know, just yet, but, but Italy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much the whole fucking boot, you know, uh, Mussolini when you're back. Uh, so... <laughs> But anyways, so I already have this thing with like traveling. I don't think traveling gives you what we think it gives you. Every major city that has tourists has already become 
touristized, if that's a word. So you're not even visiting the fucking city. You're visiting a bunch of shops that are handled by people that aren't even from there, that sell you souvenirs that weren't even made there. This whole thing is like fake. And I know that I'm being cynical about it. There's ways to get to know a city, the real city. There are ways. Uh, so that's why I like when Anthony Bourdain says this, you know, don't drink at the hotel, go drink at where the people that work there drink. Now, this could be dangerous depending on where you are. If you're in Madrid, right, or if you're in one of the Balearic Islands or in the Canary Islands of Spain, you know, I've met people that work at the hotel and I'm like, hey, dude, where are the drugs? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, not for me, for some people there that were asking and I was just trying to be a good customer service. Um, quick little fact, one time I was in one of those islands, I needed to live, to leave, and I still had oregano for the pizzas. Okay. So I, so I went to that Dominican guy, I became, I, I just say Dominican because I think it's part of the, the story, right? Dominican, Venezuelan, we're very close, Caribbean, tobacco rum. I went to him right when we were leaving, because we, we had made a little friendship, uh, along the weekend where he would tell us yeah where to go and he would get us to play golf for free in the little mini golf thing okay and then when i'm leaving i'm like hey bro i got some stuff and i can not take it in the plane and he's like okay and then i gave it to him and i felt like damn i just hooked this guy up and in that situation yeah take me to where you drink but now let's say you are and i'm sorry to say this but like i'm just making up a name right but let's say you are in <laughs> i'm trying to think Let's say you are in, um, can you think one so that you can take the hit? No, <laughs> no. Let's say you are in Thailand and I know people love Thailand. Thailand is amazing. If you get caught with a joint of weed, you will be hanged in the public square. <laughs> Hung, it's the past tense, sorry. <laughs> so uh, let's say you go to Thailand, nice, beautiful hotel. You go with the locals to drink. You don't know if you're coming back. Have you seen Hangover? Well, it just kind of, there's, maybe there's a lot of butt sex there. You don't want to be, no? Why butt sex? I, I, I understood butt <laughs> sex. You keep bringing it back, you know, like YouTube doesn't like Hinge. this topic. Uh, butt <laughs> sex is between friends. Over there, these are not necessarily friends. Well, you be, you be, uh, you're right. I think you're talking more about the actual butt sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely not monetized. <laughs> no, but I mean, it, even Thailand, I mean, that might be safe. I'm trying to think of like a country where like if you were to get out of the fucking, you know, vicinities of the hotel or of wherever you're staying, maybe outside of there is not where you want to go. So there are countries where I find that to be a bit irresponsible. Yeah, but maybe you you can go with a local. Maybe you can go with someone from there that actually takes you to the place. Let's say that's to the true, bar. And, 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 of... and that's different because then now you have a local that's going to show you the, the real experience. OK, OK. Right. In that sense, right. I agree. But don't, don't just go. Don't just go on your own into the localities <laughs> no, of anywhere. You, you also know where you're going to do it. I mean, if you're in Finland, you, you can do it, uh, you know, you where you walk there. You don't know. You don't know about the crazy uh, motor gangs of Finland. I do motor not know. There's motorcycle gangs in Finland that if you go out there trying to go to different places outside of your hotel, they will fucking murder you. No, I'm just kidding. But imagine like if there was, you're like, really in Finland? Bro, when you like when you book your thing to Finland, you book a trip to Finland and then they tell you, hey, just one thing, just don't leave the hotel, okay? Why? What's out? <laughs> just don't leave the hotel. People don't know, but Finland is actually very dangerous. No, but yeah, I mean, there's places that you can definitely do this comfortably. But there's other places where you might want to be on the lookout. You know, sometimes if you go with a local from the hotel, you're like, okay, is this a nice hotel? Does this guy probably make a good money on this hotel? He he values this job. He's not going to fucking take me to a place where they're going to take my organs because he needs this job and he wants to come back tomorrow. Now, if you're in a place where you, where you feel like this guy just started working there a week ago, he doesn't give a fuck, maybe, you know gauge your things i have been in a hotel where the employee that's offering me some uh, uh, third-party experiences you know for lack of better words i'm <laughs> like i don't know if i want to go with this guy wherever he wants to take me outside mm. of this um installments so i mean i guess what i'm saying is i like anthony bourdain's quote 
but take it with a grain of salt and always have some common sense because I, I find it that the quotes that he gives, and I don't blame him for it, you give the quote out to inspire, but it's also like be aware, like people think you're gonna travel and it's, it's always gonna be like Anthony Bourdain's videos, and it isn't. Like you need to be aware of your surroundings when you travel, and not because you 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 have this you know the Beatles, there's no borders you know, thought of the world doesn't mean that you're going to go to a place and they're not going to fucking do some shit to you. Like there was this couple that went to India and they thought that they could camp in the middle of one of the most impoverished areas in India and they got attacked and horrible things were done to the women. Again, this is not victim blaming, but it's like be aware of where you are. The world is not just fucking Cinderella. This started to get dark, this podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so butt sick. <laughs> so butt sick. <laughs> but in essence, uh, yeah, I mean, I think... No, this goes in the same vein as when you travel, try to do the things that the tourists aren't doing. I even suggest not even doing fucking tours. Don't do a tour. Mm. Go out there and you yourself, bro, you have the internet. You can find out about everything about the city, the cool spots, and go in, into the city on your own. Get lost. You can go into little towns of Spain where not that many people go, and you can get lost in the towns, have cheap beers. But sex. <laughs> I don't know when when I travel I try not to go to like I, I like to go where the locals go but also I, when I see like a, a touristy thing I, I want to check it out see what it is I, I want to see what the fuss is about so I'm not against it like there, nowadays there's a lot of bars that have like all this mimicky stuff and then they do uh, you know beautiful cocktails but they're 27 euros a cocktail so i mean you want to go there check it out and see what the fuss is about but at the same time i don't know if i want to spend you know almost 30 dollars on a drink and then maybe on the on the town side on the on the place where everybody everybody from the town goes it might be cheaper it might be not as good but you get like a two euro beer instead of a 17 i mean i remember when i the first time i went to tenerife you know this is um Canary Islands in Spain is actually close, close to the coast of Africa. It's actually where my, my heritage is from. A lot of uh, Canarian people moved to Venezuela after the Civil War. Anyways, in this place where we were staying, it was very, <laughs> it was very touristic, right? And like prices for the restaurants were a little bit pricey. But you could tell it was like Applebee's style shit, like, you know whatever stuff for a higher price. We walked a little more into the town and we found the classic little places from there where food was a lot cheaper, but but it was just a lot better quality and the treatment and everything was much, much better. So definitely when you travel places, it's, it's much better to go into the into the weaves. It's great to look at reviews, uh, which is, it helps us, but also, you know, you can take a little adventure and, and try to find places, you know. Uh, a good way that I, that I find is, how you can introduce yourself into a restaurant or a bar before you decided you want to spend there to eat. Go in there for a beer. They might give you some free food. You see the ambience. You see how they treat you. And then maybe you see the aromas. Maybe you see a plate go by and then you're like, hey, you know what? Put me on a seat. Bring me the head of a boar. For example. Wow. So anyways, that's a little tip that you can write down for the, Do for you the think travels. Do you think that's more doable, you know, to go to these places uh, in, in places like in Spain or, you know, somewhere in Europe that has a little bit more history rather than maybe the U.S.? Well, you can tell me a little bit more about this because I really don't know a lot of the U.S. myself. The, the, the bars that I've been to here are not close to what they are in in Europe. I mean, meaning in like the experience that they bring the experience like here is in, in the ones I've been in, in San Francisco are like either loud, heavy metal music. They're small. And then you go like with a, with a group of people. So it's not like a huge place, but like heavy metal and like they don't offer food. Um, so it's just like drinking and, and like, and a TV, there's always a TV on with like a baseball game or a basketball game. Um, 
and then the the decor is very not cool. I mean, again, I've been to decor, like uh, the decorations on the oh, on the okay. walls. Damn, he threw the core to me. This <laughs> motherfucker, the decor, the, decor. The, the feng shui wasn't up to par. <laughs> but I, I've been to really cool bars. So the decor are are better and more appealing to I don't know the younger people. But there's ones that are like horrible, and they don't want you. Like the, the feeling is not for you to want to stay there for long. There's, I haven't been to English bars or Irish bars, which I, I would assume that's like the, the Mecca. Uh, but you can't forget about like Czech Republic, Germany, who are big on, on beer as well. But from what I, under, from what I know, which is Europe, right? Uh, a little bit of Spain, a little bit of Portugal, the US, and Venezuela. I would say that you get a little bit of a trade-off in each place. So the US, you don't get the authentic experience that you get in Europe. But for example, I like big sports bars in the US where you can be in your own table and you're not crowded. There's a lot more space in the US, but that's not in every case. There's bars that are also very crowded and, and such. In Europe, you're most of the time tight on space. Mostly wherever you go is going to be tight on space, but it does have a lot of more out authenticity to it. It's very genuine and and it's and it's cheaper too so that's that, that that's not uh bad and you can drink from 18 i guess that's a good thing too i I've, I've been to bars in europe there like since 1886 so yeah. 100 year 100 plus years um i think there's a bar in london that has been there for like 300 years so that's that's kind of cool and, and i feel like that's something you don't see as much maybe in the United States, at least not where I've been. But I'm pretty sure there's like a, a tavern in South Carolina that's been there for years. So right, I mean, there's I exceptions. Mean, it, it depends, there, right? It depends there's exceptions, on, but in the in the general rule, Europe has a lot more of those classic bars. Maybe it's I, just because I like history, and and I feel like when you're at a place, you can feel the historic weight of that city. Men tend to like history. That's why we're into world war and stuff like that. I mean, I'm very into world wars. It's like a scientific thing. Men are very into history. Women, very into the kitchen and, and you know, cleaning and stuff. No, I mean, that part is not, that's not part of the statistics. But hey, uh, no, but yeah, the history. But no, I think everyone, right, enjoys the history, women and, and men, gay or not, butt sex or not, they enjoy the history of places. And talking about history, I wanted to talk to you about a little thing called keeping a diary. It's an art form that's dead, you know, but the great ones did it, you know, Anne Frank, you know, Roosevelt, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Hitler, you know, kept the diary. You don't see that happening now. And recently I was watching some documentary where they found someone's diary or she found it. Oh, um, and, um, Nicole Smith, is that uh, the one that OJ killed? Mm, Alleg yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> the, the, white, the white woman. Uh, she, there's a diary, right, where she writes things like, oh, tonight, you know, I got hit and I was scared. I think this man is going to kill me. You know, they found all this. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, shit, I remember that people used to keep a diary. And then you would put very personal things in a diary, right? Nicole Brown. Nicole Brown. No, Nicole Smith is the other one that married the rich guy. Anna Nicole the old Smith. Richard, Anna Nicole Smith. Um, she died, but for another reason. Um, is it is it messed? Yeah. Is it better that uh, she died first than the old guy? You remember when they got married? The old guy like, oh. died later. I. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I imagine imagine if you're like, bro, that old guy's still alive. <laughs> No, but that, you remember that the dude cons. is 113. He he stays alive with pussy juice. Damn. He you grabs young she, pussy juice. She, and he stays alive. When they get when they got married, everybody's like, "Oh, she's just marrying for the money." Um, <laughs> no, she. Damn, she died in 2007. I remember that. I remember too. We were in we were in high school yeah, back yeah. then. Uh, she I, died but, in 2007. Let me see if the the husband still. <laughs> the husband is going out with. 
Uh, okay, so the husband died <laughs> Damn. way way before her. Her. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he died in he died in nineteen ninety five. Yeah, there was a whole thing with her and and the guy's family from before right, the kids money, fighting yeah. for the money. Yeah. Yeah. Always about uh, the money. Always about the money. But um, okay, I'm gonna lose my my thought. Okay, so they found this girl's diary. I guess the point I'm making is, who the <laughs> fuck keeps a diary? Like, that's the worst way of having somebody find your deeper secrets and feelings, and and like putting them a, like putting them out there in a book. Like, I find that to be the stupidest shit. Well, and I wanted to talk to you about it. Like, who, right, who does? Right. And and now I have questions for you because you're you're a songwriter. You write your own songs, and I would think that you would have a diary. No, I, I have I have a song book. No, that's different. Right, but I don't have a diary. But it's, you would think there's that no connection. Who, there's no connection. There is. There is. You can write your thoughts there. You're like, okay, today I try to do this to myself, and I want to put I want to put this on uh, on my new song. Mm. I I feel like you can have a diary and be a songwriter. Oh, that's actually I I get I get what you mean. I mean, now that you say it like that, I find it that. Maybe I suck as a songwriter because I'm, <laughs> I'm not even like planning my thoughts and shit. No, but I mean, I, I could see how that works for somebody. I mean, for a songwriter also, but just not the way that I do it. But maybe, you know, also somebody that's writing a book or writing ideas. You, you write how you feel and then you put that into a painting or whatever the fuck. But let's I say you have a diary. OK, perfect. So now we have an but example. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I wanted to make it like that, but not one that were, I can. Were you being persecuted for being Jewish? <laughs> Wow. No, as a kid, I remember that being a thing. And then I don't know if you remember that kids back then used to put their diaries under their bed. So to me, that was a thing when I was, I don't know, six, seven, eight, maybe eight, nine. Um, I had not one that I kept. And at that age, what the fuck are you going to write? My mom is being mean to me. You know, she's not letting me have chocolate. I, what the fuck are you going to? So my mom, that something? my mom fucked the neighbor again. I, I saw there. mom going to <laughs> I was very sad that day <laughs> I felt that so, for, my, for my dad um, No, but, but Your dad's nice quick, quick, quick thing uh, I actually think that diaries were a way for religious people to keep tabs on their kids and they told them, oh, it's a cool idea put everything you do there and then I'll be able to check on you I think it's a totally sort of keep keep tabs on you type of thing and nobody should have a fucking a diary that's that nobody today and i want people to put in the comments if you know 2024 do you agree with me that having a diary is the craziest shit you could do do you have time to keep a diary that's that seems to be also an issue because i think times you can have change make, i think you can make time uh according to dr phil we <laughs> we, we, we spend about like eight hours a day on our phones yeah as, yeah. as much as we do sleeping that's that's a lot. I think I'm going a little over. over I mean, I, still. I think I think it's like three and a half, four hours. Uh, but in any case, I think there is time. Now, this is the part where I'm being a little bit of a devil's advocate. Oh, Kiko, that's pretty cute that you say that. So you're saying having a diary is so vulnerable because you're putting everything out there. Oh, I see. That's funny. You know why? You know what's you know what's out there that's kind of like that? Every social fucking media platform. Bravo, Kiko. You faked yourself. You played yourself, you motherfucker. I but think then, I... Uh, isn't it that? Like, like, like before you had the diary and anybody who could get access to the diary could get access to your thoughts. But now people just put... I mean, I don't do it, but people put all their bullshit out there. So isn't it now that we don't need diaries? Do you, what do you mean? You do that? I used to you. I used to do that on Twitter. Put every, or all, your, all your feelings out there. Mm, not so much feelings, but more like things that I thought, things that I felt. I would have loved um, to to be in that era of your life. Uh, you were, but I just keep my Twitter to myself. It's not even called Twitter. But what do you mean? Like nobody, nobody knew about could could see it. I mean, you you can see it. I'm pretty sure if you find me, you can. Okay, I just didn't down. know. Well, I just never used Twitter. But anyways, I would have loved to been a part of it and see what you were writing. Maybe you can come back. Hey, I don't mind having a blog if you want to have a blog and put your ideas. But a diary. Now I just yeah, realized too much. But it just hit to me much. that yeah, diaries aren't used anymore. They're obsolete. You know why? 
because now there's a new need. Not only do I need to write here my personal shit, I need to show it to people now mm. and I need to get their approval. So a diary, no, it's, it's old fashioned. It's, yeah. it's in the past. This, is, this doesn't give me the engagement that my HDHD brain needs now. Yeah. Don't, don't you I, see people put things in social media that you're like, oh, you're literally sharing every <laughs> single thing about you. You're opening everything, becoming vulnerable to the world. Well, that's maybe that. that's what Facebook is. It's some sort of diary because mm. and now when, that maybe that's Instagram, mm. you know, that's there's people I mean. who post every day. They do the little stories. The story is somewhat of a diary. Um, you're right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think the social media became the diary, yeah, became the diary. And and now people are sharing like pictures of their family and uh, more information about themselves or you know you, you sometimes you see people like posting pictures crying because yeah. and then the caption is like oh I had a bad day because such and such but uh, yeah. it can it can be it has that feeling yeah I mean mm. I think what what you're saying like a diary in the old school sense of having a notebook that you wrote on it every day I think yeah in some sort of way that's being obsolete i'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who still do it and uh i know that they sell uh Pas you remember las pascualinas it's like this girly diary no you know, i don't remember that pascualina was like a girly thing in, in venezuela they they would have this and then you would have the calendar and then they could put stickers as as your significant other maybe she had one yeah she probably she probably did and th that was a thing back then so and I guess what I'm like saying is, shit. what I'm saying is, unless, unless we're in the verge of invasion from, you know, overly powered uh, German troops, right? <laughs> Coming for, <laughs> for the world. Uh, and you see that they're very white, blonde, and blue-eyed. And they're in the verge of invading your country, then you can start writing a, uh, a diary so that in the case that they find you hiding in a closet, somebody can make money out of that book in the future. Mm. Unless that's your case and your last name is Frank, <laughs> then don't fucking use a diary. But anyways, you won't need to because you already share everything except your fucking asshole in the social media. There was actually a backlash about some dumb bitch that was sharing herself crying uh, in TikTok or some bullshit, like saying, oh, I have to make this cake. I'm a single parent and I'm making this cake for my birthday so that my little babies can sing it with me and be happy. And she's like complaining and crying that not even her kids are helping. That she has to do this whole thing. It's like, uh, yeah, you're like, uh, not only are you narcissistic, you are a danger to your kids because you have mental problems. Okay, if you are too weak, right, to understand that when you have little kids and you have to make your own cake for your own birthday, and you have to buy your own gifts because you're a fucking adult, Stephanie, then I don't know what to tell you. If that makes you cry, I don't know how you're going to do when real problems come in life. That would be the case if this was even real, but it isn't. It's a whole little thing that she does to bring attention. And then when you thought it couldn't get worse for her, the ex-husband came out saying, oh, by the way, she's just like this attention-seeking whore. She's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> like something like that. I, I, I don't even know why he responded, but I'm just assuming. But I know that he did because mm -hmm. you see the thing, right? Like you won't believe what the you know, husband, you know, clickbait bullshit. Um, another thing people do, stop posting everywhere you are. That's how celebrities got robbed back in the day. And that's how people get killed sometimes. Little cool trip, a little cool trick that I got for you guys if you really need to share everything you do. Let's say you go on a trip. Wait until you're back home. Share it then. It's probably even more fun. You have time to actually react to it, see it. And then nobody knows, oh, shit, this special weekend, these guys aren't home. You don't know who's out there. The world is filled with evil. Yeah. Don't share everything about where you live. That's why we only share the books. Yeah, only the books. And, and the city. We give city, but no, no specification. <laughs> I don't even live in Madrid anymore. Right. Um, okay. Well, that was exciting.
That was exciting. Are you going to start keeping a diary now? Yeah. <laughs> unless. No, unless. <laughs> uh, some. Anyways. Unless uh, the, the Germans get a little. A little feisty in the recent years. <laughs> I don't, I don't, no, probably not a, a diary. No, no, I don't have much time for that. I mean, I have time. I don't have a job. Would you but... consider because, you know, you, you, you studied journalism, you didn't graduate, we're, we're, you know, you look at us, we're not, the, we're not the kind to graduate. I didn't graduate either, but from college, we did graduate from high school. We're not illiterate, yeah, yeah. but you know, you were a writer. You wanted to be a sports journalist. So you do have a little bit of writing in you. You're telling me you kept a diary when you were a kid and. You were gay. Are you but maybe sex. looking into a blog, which is like a diary, but not so gay? It's more like, a, you know, <laughs> you tell us so, your thoughts about life. and Yeah, I mean, I thought about it before. The thing is that, again, I don't, I don't have time. Okay. And I don't want to spend much of my time on the phone, which I already do enough of. What would you have to spend <laughs> on the phone? Well, because I don't have a computer. This is the only computer I have. Mm. And uh, I would have to spend more time on the. Okay. I don't know. I don't. Sometimes I I lose my my train of thought as as you've seen when we talk. Okay. So, but maybe if you in the future had more time because the podcast was successful, of then course. maybe you could have a Broski Doodles blog where we can talk. We, you know, we can do that. Okay. Put our we feelings can, down. Like a weekly thing things. where you you know Chef Maurice. Tells his little perspective about, you know, kind of like origin story, Anthony Bourdain's, but in your own way. Maybe, yeah, maybe some quotes of right? where to go drink. Right. And then eventually, okay. you know, you write your own kitchen confidential and then who knows? You leave us. Mm. You leave the podcast. Mm. You're like, hey, I'm sorry. I'm bigger than this now. Because and then I we hung myself. <laughs> and we... And what? Whoa. Whoa. Whoa buddy. Demonetize this bitch. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's just more like damn no no but yeah I mean I want you to be successful but not that successful that you I wouldn't you know, want to leave this the, the word no you want to continue no I meant the podcast okay no no that's what I mean okay okay well that's good so you wouldn't leave even if you you know become bigger than us if I become a millionaire a billionaire because I won the lottery okay I would actually I would we would make this together instead of through okay. Zoom. We we'll just we'll, we'll live in the studio together like the yeah, Mormons. We'll like make, the Mor <laughs> Mormons. <laughs> Maybe we'll build a studio and then you see everything goes back to butt sex, eh, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and I think that that's the sort of uh message of the episode today. At the butt end of the sex. day, when you circle back, as much as you try not to, you you get back to butt sex. One thing we didn't mention before, or it, because we didn't think about it, it was, does this happen with girls as well? Do they have, I, we we saw a lot of cases or a couple of cases that were men, straight men, uh, but this ha does this happen to women? I bet it does, and I bet there's a lot more new ones because it's just girls night out. I'm not penetrating you with anything in my body. I'm using a plastic thing, so I'm not even touching you. Right. I'm just Damn. holding this vibrator and you click. <laughs> Girls night out. <laughs> now you know. Yeah, so, baby. yeah, I mean, there's many ways to help a homegirl out, homeboy out. And we want you to you know, tell us how you do it. Do you, you know, find any of this to be valid? Uh, do you find the one hour podcast now more satisfying to you? Please let us know because obviously we're putting a lot more effort into this. Uh, so that you can have a nicer, you know, jog that morning or, you know, commute to work or if you have to go to the unemployment office. Makes it a little easier if, you know, the broski doodles are in the background giving you a little bit of support. You know, if you feel like today maybe you're not worthy, maybe, you know, you're not worthy of a new job. You know, you don't have the skills. You know, you may, you know, have one too many chromosomes. Well, what I say, I say believe. I say work hard. I say, look at us and think, okay, do they have jobs? They do some, sometimes. Well, then maybe I can get one too. Okay. Chef Maurice, Kiko Flow, thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>